A lot of people have jumped on the fitness bandwagon, so we decided to test three of the most popular brands, all of them under 200 bucks. The reason? Well, we want to see if your fitness tracker is telling the truth or telling you lies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, seventeen, nineteen, fifty-four, eighty-six, three hundred twenty-two, and. Whew, 10,000. Now, whether you're counting steps, counting calories, counting time, or counting sheep. So I sometimes wear a Fitbit. Well, there's a device for that. I have the Jawbone, the Up Band 3. I usually wear a Fitbit. I call it my liar watch. But can you really count on its accuracy? People wear them all the time, and I wonder if they actually work. So do we. So we decide to test out three very popular fitness bands for ourselves. First off, the Fitbit Charge 2, the Samsung Gear Fit 2, and the Garmin Vivo Smart. Now, the next step is take our trackers to the experts. We're here at Tosh, the orthopedic specialty hospital, where they have the equipment to measure just how accurate these things really are. All we have to do is hop on this treadmill, and they can analyze heart rate, distance, calories, and steps. Let's do this. So we recruited nine of KSL's finest employees and uh, me, and then let the experts do the rest. You can go ahead and step away. After getting their age, height, and weight, each of our subjects then strapped a heart rate monitor to their chest. How does that feel? That's good. Hopped on a research treadmill. So you can go ahead and step up on. Which measures steps and distance. And finally, put on this guy. Mask me up. So I'm going to have you put this on. Fashion statement. A breathing tube that monitors oxygen consumption. Nobody told me about a face contraption. <laughs> no. That was not in the memo. All right, sorry, Debbie, but that contraption actually calculates how many calories you you burn. Then we strapped on all three fitness bands. Ready? And we're good to go. Ten minutes later, tired and sweaty. Three, two, one, off. It's finally over. It's like a bad combination of the dentist and the gym. Yeah, we're measuring your oxygen. Control. Dr. Jim Walker is the sports science director at Tosh. He and his team ran the data, and as you can imagine, the results are varied. First up, steps. With Alex, the Fitbit counted 1,061 steps. The lab counted 1,061 steps. It was 100% accurate, but hold on here. With Candace, it counted 1,101 steps. The lab counting 1,319 steps. That's over 200 steps off in just 10 minutes. It depends on the person, on how they wore it, how they moved, uh, how accurate the individual device was. As for steps, the Fitbit was 95% accurate. Sounds pretty good, right? But not as good as the Samsung or the Garmin, which came out on top with 98% accuracy. Next up, distance. With all three trackers, distance was actually less accurate than steps. Both the Fitbit and the Garmin told me I ran almost 1.2 miles. Now the lab clocked me at one mile even. 20% different, yeah. You go five miles, it's going to tell you you went six miles. So that's a pretty large error rate. This time it's a Garmin in third, Fitbit in second, and the Samsung with the best accuracy, but only at 89%. I want to get out and get sweaty and get my heart rate up for... Uh, 30 to 45 minutes. Well, tough guy, this one's for you. All three devices tended to overestimate maximum heart rate, but the Fitbit was the most off. The lab showed Alex peaked at 93 beats per minute. The Fitbit had him at 135. That is a big difference. If the heart rate device that you're using to measure it is that far off, then you're not achieving the training effect that you're looking for during that particular workout. The Fitbit came in third, the Garmin, and the Samsung, meanwhile, were very close first and second. And last but not least... I want to eat more cupcakes and pizza, so I want to know if I'm matching up to what it says I can eat. Everyone's favorite, calories. Now, you remember that face contraption? Well, that's how Dr. Walker's team measures calories. But fitness bands use a combination of your physical activity and your gender, age, height, and weight. So, I put in my stats, ran for 10 minutes, and voila. All three bands, according to the Tosh technicians, actually underestimated calories burned. But the Samsung was the most off. It was third place with only 58% accuracy. Garmin was second, and Fitbit fared the best this time around. Whether they're plus or minus from reality is a kind of immaterial for the general fitness exerciser, but it's a way to track. Bottom line, none of the fitness trackers we tested were 100% accurate, but maybe 
they don't need to be. And it keeps me accountable. It motivates me to meet my goal every day. It reminds me, oh yeah, I got to get my steps in today. You feel really guilty at the end of the day when you look down and it's like 3,000 steps and you're like, oh, I got to go walk some more. 942, 943. They're just a good reminder to keep on counting. 49, 50. All right, if you are in the market for a fitness tracker, you are in luck here. We're giving away the three bands that we tested on our Facebook page, so get on over there to enter. And we did wash them off, so not going to be full of sweat.